Alright, hi students, welcome to today's online lesson. Okay, so there will be a total of three videos on this chapter of extraction of metals, and we have categorized them into the different videos based on the concepts they are being taught. Okay, so and this is part one. So in the previous chapter, you should have already learned about the metal reactivity series. So do you still remember what is the order of reactivity of the various metals? Okay, a hint to you will be that it has something to do with this picture they are looking at right now. Okay, you see a pop star, you see some zombies. Okay, then that should give you some idea of what I'm trying to bring across. Okay, so using the first letters of the metals that are being involved in this series, you can form these mnemonics. And just want to point out that I uh, hope you still remember that hydrogen, although it's not a metal, but we still uh, include it in the reactivity series. So your teachers should have already gone through with you the reason why we do that. Alright, so this is one way that we can help ourselves to remember the reactivity series. So from this reactivity series, we can actually determine which are the more reactive metals, while which are the least reactive ones. Okay, so for instance, potassium, sodium, calcium will be the more reactive ones, and whereas copper, silver, gold, or our, the famous precious metals, will be the least reactive ones okay and this allows us to be able to extract certain information so using the series we can actually improvise on many meaningful applications first of all would be the idea of sacrificial protection so as you can see in these diagrams there are these silver looking blocks and they are actually blocks of zinc metal okay and these are usually included within the ship structures to help to protect the iron alloy against corrosion and this is possible because zinc is actually more reactive than iron and so it will corrode first in place of iron and therefore during the entire um, process of protection another example is the concept of displacement of matter okay so this i'm going to show you a video on this particular reaction called the thermite reaction so as you can see from the um, chemical equation over there it is a reaction between aluminium and iron three oxide in the process um, iron is being produced. Watch for the liquid metal. Okay. Everybody, Everybody watch at home. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So, right there, liquid iron. That's, that's liquid that's dropping into the fan. Falling down into the fan. How hot is that? In excess of four to five thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. So that's like molten. Right? That is molten. Ooh. In fact, yep. As you can see, molten iron is being produced during this process, and this is the idea behind um, displacement, whereby the aluminium actually displaces the iron from its oxide. Okay. So for today's lesson, we will be focusing on how we can use the reactivity series to determine the best method to extract. Um, different types of metals so although some metals can um, exist uncombined in their natural state most reactive metals actually exist in nature as what we call ores the okay, ores are a type of rocks whereby the metal minerals are found inside so these are some um, examples for instance bauxite bauxite is an ore that contains the um, compound aluminium oxide limestone contains calcium carbonate Hematite contains iron 3 oxide and galena contains lead 2 sulfide. Okay, these are just some examples of the metal ores that are uh, being present in nature. Okay, and you can notice that the various metal elements that are being found in each and every one of them. All right, and this is what we are interested in. How or rather which methods can we use to extract these metals out? So, here are some more other examples. For sodium, the name of the ore that is found in will be rock salt. Okay? And the chemical name of the main mineral in the ore is sodium chloride. For calcium, like what I mentioned previously, there will be the limestone. And the name of the mineral, mineral present within it is called calcium carbonate. For magnesium, it is found in the ore called magnesite, uh, which consists of the ore magnesium carbonate. And for iron, it is found in the ore hematite, which consists of the mineral iron 3 oxide, Fe2O3. Among this list, the 
particularly important ones are iron or hematite as well as bauxite okay these are the ones that we usually see within your syllabus itself all right the purpose of having extraction is because the ores actually contain other substances so we need it to first get rid of the unwanted substances so that we can obtain the pure matter from the mineral okay, and that's the whole idea behind why we need to perform extraction when it comes to the extraction process the reactivity series plays a big part it helps helps us to determine what is the best method so what we can do is we can actually categorize the reactivity series into three different groups with the very reactive metals consisting of potassium sodium calcium magnesium and aluminium the least the less reactive metals as well as the unreactive metals okay this is based on what you learned in the previous chapter so for the very reactive metals right the method that we use will be much more vigorous okay whereas for the unreactive metals the method will be more straightforward in a way so for the very reactive metals we use this method called electrolysis for the less reactive one we use uh, reduction by coke okay, i'll explain more on what is coke it's not the one that you use to drink and last but not least for the unreactive metals we use physical methods and that's enough to extract the metal itself okay i would don't worry too much i will dwell into each of the methods more specifically okay first for electrolysis the electrolysis is used for the very reactive metals we should see in, on the slide now and the reason is because the electrostatic forces of attraction between the metal ions and the anions are actually very strong so since the forces of attraction are very strong we need a lot of energy and a very complicated process and that is why we need to use this expensive process called electrolysis in electrolysis an electric current is passed through the metal compound to decompose it and by doing so we actually help to obtain the pure metal itself okay. so i'm going to show you a video of how electrolysis can be used to help extract aluminium from its um, ore which is known as bauxite okay so this is the extraction of aluminium from bauxite extraction of aluminium this is the most abundant metal on earth however it is always found within compounds and must be extracted one of the methods used is electrolysis aluminium oxide is mined and purified from bauxite the most, most common ore of aluminium, and, and dissolved in molten cryolite, a less, less common ore with a lower melting point. This saves costs, and as aluminium oxide has a melting point of over 2,000 degrees Celsius. The electrodes used are made of graphite, carbon, which is a very good conductor of electricity. Aluminium forms on the negative electrode, and oxygen migrates to the positive electrode. Okay, so as you saw in the on in the video, right, the aluminium will actually be formed on uh, what we call an electrode. Okay, it doesn't really matter that matter that much um, how the process work, but rather how do you choose the right process for the right type of metals. Okay, so in this reaction, what actually happens is from aluminium oxide, which is found in the bauxite ore. Okay, it actually undergoes the reaction to the electrolysis to give you your molten aluminium which is the pure metal that we want at the same time producing oxygen gas the second method of extraction is reduction with coke okay, and which consists mainly of carbon so these are for the less reactive metals okay, they can be extracted by simply reacting their ores with coke so what exactly is coke? coke is obtained from coal okay, and it consists mainly of carbon okay, you can see it from the diagram over here it functions as a reducing agent what is a reducing agent okay this is something that you learned in the previous topic of redox reaction what exactly does a reducing agent mean okay, so i would like you to take some time you can pause the video if you want to recall what exactly is a reducing agent right there can be plenty of reducing agents available but we choose to use coke in this process is because it is very cheap and it's um available in large quantity and it can help to supply heat energy in the process which we will need during the extraction process okay so 
later on during this chapter you realize that often time when we talk about cope okay we actually represent it with the symbol for carbon which is the alphabet C okay, because coke consists mainly of carbon and that's why when we write it in a chemical equation we write the alphabet C let's take a look at one example okay so there will be the extraction of zinc from zinc blend okay zinc blend consists of this mineral known as zinc sulfide which is Z and S in terms of the formula firstly zinc sulfide is heated in air to form zinc oxide Alright, this is a reaction between zinc sulfide with oxygen gas in air to form zinc oxide and at the same time producing sulfur dioxide. Zinc oxide is then heated with coal, which consists of mainly carbon, to produce your pure metal zinc. Okay, as you see here, this carbon that you see over here represents coal. Okay, this is what I mean just now when I say that the two are the same. Okay. Co uh, when you write it in a chemical equation, write it as um, in the alphabet C. So carbon is acting as a reducing agent at this point in time. Okay? If you want to understand why is it a reducing agent, just work out the oxidation state of the respective elements before and after the chemical reaction. Now, the last method, which is physical methods. These are for the least reactive metals, which basically just exist uncombined in their natural state. Okay, so for them, you can simply use physical methods to extract them out. Okay, so, in summary, we have now looked at how the reactivity series can be used for us to determine should we use the method of electrolysis, should we use the method of deduction by code, or should we just use physical methods to help in the extraction of metals from its ores. Alright, so the main concept that you should take home from this uh, particular video is which method to use when um, given a particular type of metals. Okay, so for instance, if we look at magnesium, okay, which, which method should we use for extraction of magnesium? Since magnesium is a very reactive metal, the method to use will be electrolysis. And that, that is how we choose the method to be used. Right, so with this, we have come to the end of the first video. I know it's very fast, very short. Okay, So there's two more videos that you need to um, view in order to have a better understanding of this video. Alright, thank you.